Welcome to Imposters, the show where I have revealing conversations with world-class execs, athletes, and entertainers about their personal challenges and how overcoming those challenges has shaped their careers and lives for the better. I'm your host, Alex Lieberman, co-founder and executive chairman of Morning Brew. My guests today are Danielle Dubois and Whitney Tingle. In 2012, the Lifelong Friends founded Sakara Life, an organic meal delivery program focused on whole foods and science-backed nutrition. Last year, the company brought in over $150 million in revenue, and today the company is more of an overall lifestyle brand far beyond just meal delivery. But as you might have guessed, the road to success for Danielle and Whitney was not a smooth one. Both of them describe having reached a personal rock bottom before deciding to pursue entrepreneurship. And even though they had each other, getting their business off the ground was hard fought. My full conversation with Danielle Dubois and Whitney Tingle right after this quick break. Staying hydrated is one of the simplest ways that you can take care of yourself and your health. It can also be one of the first things to become an afterthought when your focus gets pulled away. Action Ion Charged Alkaline Water can make it easier and more enjoyable to keep up with hydration. Action Water goes through a multi-stage purification and filtration process to ensure it's at peak quality. Action Water is at a 9.5 pH level or higher at the time of bottling. Plus, there are electrolytes added for taste with no sodium added. Learn more at drinkaction.com. That's drinkaction.com. Danielle and Whitney, welcome to Imposter. So good to have you guys. Thanks for having us, Alex. Thanks for having us. So both of your stories as childhood friends that ultimately led to you guys creating a $150 million business is both incredibly inspiring. It's also a really unique story. As kids, did you two think you'd be creating Sakara together? That is such a funny question. And I think we're going to both say yes, right, Whit? I mean, I I remember the first time we ever did a project together. Uh, I think it was, maybe it was eighth grade math class. And we just, even from that moment, we worked so well together. I think even in that project, we were supposed to be working on a fake business or something (laughs) along those lines. Um, And then, you know, we spent the course of five years together playing year round volleyball. Danielle was varsity captain. I was definitely not that great at volleyball, <laughs> but I, I loved being on a team. team player away. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that was really impactful on becoming partners together, building communication, building trust. Even now, we kind of refer back to some of those things that we learned about calling the ball. I got this. No, you got it. Um, and just all those years of being friends and having wild adventures, especially in the early days of New York City, um, really made an impact on getting to know each other on a really deep level. And that's important when you're business partners. Totally. And I mean, you guys have the amazing fortune of building trust over, you yeah. know, decades. I think back to my relationship with my co-founder Austin and I think about how that was both the most important choice I ever made but also the luckiest choice I ever made because you know this guy became my co-founder in basically five weeks of knowing each other and we had no idea what this was going to turn into but you said something interesting before our conversation which is like that that people mistake the two of you all the time and it's funny because a similar type of thing is done for Austin and I we both (laughs) look like you know, generic looking uh, Jewish dudes from the Northeast. <laughs> and, and, but, but the, the interesting part is um, on the non optic side, I would say uh, uh, Austin and I are incredibly different people as thinkers. Um, and I think that's why we've worked so well together over the years. As you guys have grown as partners, have you noticed that the way that you both think tends to, go in different directions or you're more similar than Austin and I like how how do you guys think differently or similarly from one another I would say you know in a lot of ways we think similarly like we speak telepathically like there's so many ways that we communicate that we don't even have to say the words which is so efficient and so helpful Mm -hmm. Um, but there are kind of fundamentals that I'd say are different between the two of us I'd say Whitney is always thinking about the long game, like always thinking about the future, always making sure like the decisions that we make now are with the future in mind. 
where I'm more mercurial and I like change and I like to like push the boundaries and I don't like rules and Whitney definitely has some of that too. These are not as divergent as they might sound. I'm just um, a little bit more I'm, conservative and hesitant. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like Danielle's like, those, go, right? go. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to play off of those. And then I'd say the, the best thing is with that deep trust comes really profound communication and not just telepathically, but we understand each other in a way that we don't have to go explain ourselves. And I think it helps us. We do a lot, a lot of brainstorming together so that by the time our team hears something, we've gotten to work through it in our head um, and make sure we're really clear about like where we're going, what we're thinking, what we're doing, innovation, et cetera. Well, I want to, uh, in a minute, talk about you know how you guys have leaned on each other at different points of the journey. But for a second, I just want to isolate each of you individually and your journeys to getting to where you are today. You know, Sakara's journey, just like any entrepreneurial journey, is one that is long and winding. Whitney, let's start with you. What was your journey to ultimately realizing Sakara's vision and mission? Well, so as you mentioned, Danielle and I grew up together. We were childhood friends, grew up in Sedona, Arizona. It's this small hippie spiritual town, kind of on the forefront of this new age thinking, um, mind, body, food, medicine, and people come there from all around the world in search of healing. So we had this really unique upbringing, um, very eccentric types of thinkers around us. Fast forward, we're both living in New York City. Danielle moved out there to go to school. I moved out there to work on Wall Street after school. Um, started my career at Merrill Lynch, thought I wanted to be a, a private banker. That was in 2008. Not a great year to be going into finance. You know, crazy work environment, crazy work lifestyle. But I had been battling with cystic acne since we're, you know, since puberty, I would say. And I had big red painful cysts all over my face that affected, you know, they were painful and they affected my skin, but they were also affecting my mental health, how I felt about myself, how I showed up in the world, how I felt walking into a, a room at work, how I felt walking into a room on a date, my love life, every aspect of my life. And I had tried literally everything out on the market. I bought everything off of the infomercials. I went to different types of doctors who put me on rounds and rounds of antibiotics. You know, I did tetracycline, aminocycline. I had a Z-pack in my uh, dorm room desk drawer for when I had a breakout. I would take a Z-pack, which is, you know, what they give you for pneumonia, like a, a big antibiotic bomb to your system. And um, none of that worked. They put me on birth control pills, different hormone pills. None of that worked. Um, I did Accutane, which is a really serious drug. Um, along with the Accutane, they put me on Prozac because suicide can be a side effect. They had me sign a contract saying that if I were to get pregnant, I would get an abortion because my baby would come out with birth defects. And, you know, I kind of hit this rock bottom moment where I had seen all these different doctors, you know, I was paying hundreds of dollars for five minutes to sit in this doctor's chair, and I had read about them in the fancy magazines, so they must know the answer, right? And they just wanted to hand me another prescription for a mega round of antibiotics, another prescription for another round of Accutane, and I had just, like, had enough, enough of all the prescriptions, enough of searching outside for the answer, and this voice inside of me was screaming, just don't do it. It's not the answer. You need to look inside. What is going on on the inside that is creating these symptoms on your face? I needed to find the root cause. And so in that moment, I turned back to my roots, back to my Sedona roots, back to my best friend um, to, to, to figure out what was the answer and turn to food and nutrition um, as my solution. So, and you know, we I would say hit a rock bottom together, and we're both really grateful that we had each other once again. Um, my story is different. I knew I always wanted to work in medicine, be in healthcare. Uh, I moved to New York City to to study medicine, and it was about five years in. I was interning at a hospital up in um, St. Luke's Harlem. 
and I had been doing it for about a year and I was working with a cardiologist that saw it was a free clinic so we were seeing you know a very underserved population one two uh, we were seeing people who had late stage lifestyle diseases so um, you know were on things like dialysis or where surgery was their only option and I had this aha moment because it was a convergence of two things for me one I wanted to go into medicine to help people feel better um, and two I had been dealing with my own issues around food and health I'd been dieting my entire life which after about 15 years of dieting left me with lots of gut disorders which they all just bucket under IBS and have no idea what to do with you and that's like the conventional medical approach and so those two things brought me to this aha moment. I needed so much healing to do around food. Seeing these patients that had late stage lifestyle diseases, wondering who got to them before they were late stage lifestyle diseases. Because thank God for conventional medicine that was you know, helping these people at least have a more comfortable life. Um, but it, you know, by the, even the term lifestyle medicine or lifestyle diseases, you can affect the disease by changing your lifestyle. So who was helping them do that? And then I needed so much help. And I was five years in at this point, had never taken a nutrition course. And I was like, I wanna get back to what we grew up in, this understanding of food as medicine and like mind-body medicine as well. Like what's your emotional connection to your plate? Do you understand that nourishment is important? Do you even know how to nourish? Because diets, by the way, taught me that I should count calories and carbs and points and pounds and how I looked was all I was solving for, not how I was feeling. So that's where I kind of diverged on my traditional medical path. Um, I went on to study nutrition. I'm, I'm currently getting my master's in functional medicine as well. And it put me on this mission to understand how to not only think about preventative healthcare, but also for those people who are dealing with lifestyle diseases, how, where do these start? You know, especially 10 years ago, some of the science was just coming out about the microbiome and how to heal the gut. So we said, okay, we know food is medicine. We know the number one predictor to a healthy gut is getting enough plants, um, enough high quality plants into your diet. Let's try this on ourselves. So we did, we created this meal program, made breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each other following what we now call our nutrition pillars. And it completely transformed our lives in, in the most you know, dramatic of ways. And I'd say, you know, for me, I finally realized that I, had been so worried about what not to eat and what I looked like that I forgot that food is there to make me feel better and food is about nourishment. Um, and for Whitney, you know, I know she, like for the first time I saw, I personally saw all the inflammation in her skin go down and we realized she didn't have a skin problem, she had a gut problem. So we thought if we could help one other person transform their lives even a little bit, you know, even to a, a tenth degree that we did, it would be such a blessing. So we did, we started with one person, we cooked for them, delivered on our bicycles, which sounds so quaint, but it was actually really hard work. <laughs> New York and where City was winters. this, where, where, where were you guys originally delivering on bicycles? All over New York City. In yeah. the dead of winter, you know, we just did it. I will give that to it and I, like if we put our minds to something, we'll- We got grit. We'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll keep going. Whitney and Danielle's tenacity has certainly paid off. Today, Sakara has kitchens in both Long Island City, New York, and Gardena, California, and their sales have grown by 60% every year for the past three years. We're gonna take a quick break here, but when we come back, we'll hear about what marked the major turning points for Sakara's success, as well as what makes Danielle and Whitney's relationship as co-CEOs work so very well. Stay with us. It's hard to feel your best during the day when you're not sleeping your best at night. So I want to tell you about a soft and firm mattress that will help you get the sleep that you need to be your best self. Purple mattresses have a gel flex grid that instantly adapts to your movements and keeps you cool all night long. But don't take my word for it. You can experience what a purple night's sleep can be like at a showroom near you. You could also try it out for yourself with fast free shipping and 100 night no pressure trial. Become an overnight success with a purple mattress. Learn more at purple.com. That's P U rple.com. And we're back. Before the break, we heard about the low points that drove Danielle and Whitney to create Sakara and what some of those early days were like. But what I was really curious to know was what was the moment that they knew that they would succeed? What was the inflection point for you guys? Uh, and I'd love to hear each of your answers to see if they're different. The point at which it went from, we're solving our own problem. 
um, and facing the challenges that we'd been dealing with for a long time to, oh, wow, like this is actually something that can serve millions of people. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's just just as an example, like for Morning Brew, the the example was the first time I saw a stranger reading our newsletter on a New York City mm -hmm. subway. That wasn't like my grandma or my mom. Uh, so I'd love to hear <laughs> from you guys. What was that point? Um, well, I'd say there are a couple, so I'll leave one for you, Rick, because I'm okay. sure you have the same <laughs> ones. But, um, you know, I'd say one of the most meaningful ones was we got, you know, a, a testimonial very early on. And the testimonials would always come at the point where we were like, what are we doing with our lives? Like, we're cooking all night for we people. We can't do this. We're all morning. This isn't going to work. We're, yeah, we're like CS people. We're the finance <laughs> function. We're like... We like, what are we doing? We didn't have any employees yet. It was just us. We had like fake pen names so we could escalate problems if we had to. Um, it was it was mayhem and madness. And then I remember one of our first testimonials, um, which we're about to have our 10 year anniversary, or we're, it's right now, I guess. Um, and it's amazing. we should reach Congrats. out to him. With, I've been thinking Thanks. about this, but we should reach yeah. out to him. Because um, it was one of the first ones where I was like, this is so much bigger than we could have even fathomed. And it was this man who, he wrote us an essay and he said, I've been traveling all over the world looking for a solution to um, the type of cancer he had. He had a specific cancer that was cancer of your nerve sheaths, which you can imagine is incredibly painful. It's literally your nerves um, with tumors. And he said, you know, it was clear that in lowering inflammation really helped with his pain. So he went all over the world, he did all these medical retreats, he saw all the top doctors, and he said, I've been on your program for three months and I've never felt better. I've gotten off of several medications. So much of my pain is down, so much of my inflammation is down. And it was this aha moment of, this is one person's story. You know, when we set out to do this, we felt like we were gonna find people that were some version of our own stories. And it was this realization that everyone's gonna have their own reckoning, their own reason why they're ready for this transformation, why they are so desperate to take their health into their own hands. Sometimes it's as unfortunate as cancer, and sometimes it's, I just like crave to, like just crave that feeling of feeling like my best self and I haven't felt that way, or I'm a new mother, or I'm dealing with autoimmune disease. And then it was just like testimony after testimonial would show us that everyone we, we can meet people where they are it doesn't matter what you're going through this is a tool in your toolkit to help you feel really good and that was we were having a dark day that day and and feeling i remember riding in the taxi cab together just being like oh we can't do this anymore like it's just too much and then opening up our email seeing that email and just crying being like this is a message sent from the universe telling us we have to keep going, that people need this. People need us to continue to bring this out into the world. And um, I think that, I it's, that. it's really um, what has kept us going over the years is remembering that this isn't about us as entrepreneurs, about trying to be a success, but really about being in service to others. I love that. Before we move on uh, to uh, the next question, Whitney, do you have uh, a story of your own when you felt like there, there was a major inflection point in the business where you, like, you knew this was going to be something that could help millions of people? I mean, after we got our first press hit, that was pretty big. I think we didn't know the power of press. Um, we thought it, it would just be cool, a, a great way to get our name out and whatnot. We, um, we had gotten this girl's business card randomly and had saved it. I mean, Danielle and I had collected business cards since we, you know, living in New York City. This was over a decade ago, so the business cards still existed. I was going to say, I don't even know R. what those are. <laughs> yeah, RIP business cards. Um, but we put them in plastic Ziploc bags. And when we were like, all right, let's do this. This is going to be a business. We pulled those like out of drawers and dumped them on the floor and looked through and found this girl's business card. And um, it was one I had collected. And Danielle grabbed it, and she was like, OK, email this girl. I'm like, I don't know her. I don't, I, I don't even, I had never even met her. I just got this card. She was like, do it. 
And I'm like, no, I can't. So she grabs the computer and she emails and she's like, hey, girl, great to meet you or good to see you. Um, hope you've been well. Wanted to catch you up on what we've been up to. Started this business. Think you'd be into it. Um, you know, let's meet up or something just super casual. Meanwhile, she was the lead editor for New York City for Daily Candy, which another wow. RIP. Um, yep. But, and the girl responded and was like, wow, sounds super cool. Let's meet up. And so we met up with her. We told her about what we were doing. She said she wanted to try it. And we were still like our only employees. So we cooked her the meals. We delivered them to her at 8 a.m., which she was not expecting to see us show up knocking at her door at 8 a.m. Um, oh, we had a delivery team. Yeah. And we were like, you know, we just wanted it to get there perfectly to you and make sure it arrived. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lie. we had no delivery <laughs> yeah, people. Um, but she loved it, and she decided to write about it. And I remember that day that the article hit because Danielle sent me a text message like, oh, my God, did you see the emails? And my heart dropped. And I was like, oh, my gosh, did somebody like get food poisoning or something? Mm -hmm. And I opened up my computer, and it was just page after page of how do I sign up? I want to do this. Let's, uh, let's talk about your guys' relationship. What's, uh, what's a moment or two uh, in your journey, whether it's professionally or personally, where you realized how grateful uh, that you are to have one another? Are you just going to make us cry right now on this podcast? <laughs> that, because... That's the goal. That, 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 that is the goal. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, there's so many. I mean, Who wants to start? Every, like, literally every day. No, it's every literally day. every day. Like, there's just... There's, so we both have kids now. So we've both been through each other's uh, maternity leave. <laughs> it's so painful. Is you just, um, it's like not having your right arm or left arm, depending on whichever arm is dominant for you. It's like, you know, there's a way in which I feel as though decisions are best when they go through both of our brains. And I just know that for Sakara. Um, and so when I'm missing her because she's out or sick or whatever, it's like I desperately miss her input and her strategic thinking and how smart she is. And, you know, she's always, always, like, she's never afraid of the details, one, which I'm not afraid of them. I just don't think they always matter. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. Same. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, there's, like, so many examples of where her tenacity has gotten us here. Like I remember early on, um, she discovered that there was this way if you were a, a young business in New York City, you could get free legal. And but to do it, you had to like fill out all. It was basically like a grant. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> let's just pay for legal. This is like so ridiculous. And she like stayed up all night and just did it. And then we got approved. And then for two years, we had like the best free legal team at like Kirkland or something like it's top incredible. legal team and it saved us like hundreds no, of thousands of dollars we uh, they actually completed our um first we were at Kirkland and then we got a second grant and we moved to Curtis Malay who is another massive yeah. New York City law firm yeah the, these are firms that are charging, these are like you know, top five thousands top ten of dollars an hour exactly. yes yeah. and they gave us a bill at the end of it that was zeroed out but to show us how much it would cost it was a quarter of a million dollars oh in legal fees um so you know worth, that's unreal but we wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise you know we bootstrap the business ourselves we we don't come from wealthy family backgrounds we didn't have you know daddies or boyfriends to bankroll us like we built everything from scratch from the ground up and through hustle so um you know sometimes it takes a little extra work and a, a little extra effort but in the end it, it, it pays off okay i want to finish up with your guys's mental wellness toolkit mm -hmm. so i want you to share with me when you're going through a funk whether it's a funk professionally personally and you're just trying to get yourself out of it um, and just gain clarity, feel better. What are three things that help you get out of your funk? Uh, Danielle, I'll let you go first and then Whitney. Um, well, I know this is, I don't know what the word is, but <laughs> having my, my food and my nutrition taken care of 
because I can forget to take care of myself too. Just because I, you know, I own a health company doesn't mean that, you know, it's always my number one priority. And in fact, it isn't always my number one priority. And that's why I am my own best customer. And it's really important to me because quality input is quality output. And we teach this a lot at Sakara. Um, and so, you know, I, 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 I live by that. I don't just talk about it. So when my f nutrition is taken care of, it saves me so much thought. Coming home to that breakfast, lunch, and dinner cadence is, is transformative for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say the other, there's two other things. One is sometimes when you're so head down, I feel like you need perspective. So the, the two things that help give me perspective are one, some form of art. Like I really appreciate people's creativity and you know, it's almost like this connection to spirit or this connection to something bigger than ourselves. So whether it's, you know, going to a museum or I live in the Lower East Side, there's lots of incredible young creative people down there. Um, I immerse myself. And then the other thing is, um, we just had Marion Williamson actually on the Sakara Life podcast. It hasn't launched yet. Um, but we just interviewed her and I've been a huge fan of her for a really long time. Um, I actually have her book here. Um, she actually ran for president back in 2020, um, but she wrote a book called A Return to Love. And it literally is a return to love. And so when you're, her whole thing is like you're either walking in love or you're walking in fear at all times. It's very black and white and there's actually no in between. So when I'm feeling off, it's usually because I'm walking in fear. And so how do you reorient yourself to walking in love and understanding, as Whitney said, um, one of the things I strive toward is trusting the flow of the universe and, and trusting that things are happening as they should and because they should. And this book in particular is one of those things that helps me come home to that. I love that. Um, Whitney, how about yours? Um, I would definitely agree with Danielle about having my food and nutrition taken care of as number one. Um, I think we have to look at our physical stressors first. I think our mental stressors are a little bit more difficult to deal with. And our physical bodies Im impact our mental stress and our mental health. So, you know, what you put into your body affects everything from your hormone levels, which affect your moods, to your um, gut health and your microbiome, which is the epicenter of your health. Um, what It's like 70% of your immune system, 90% of your serotonin is created in the gut, not in the brain. It travels up your vagus nerve into your brain. So um, what you eat affects your happiness levels. It affects your energy levels, how you show up at work, your brain clarity, um, just everything. So making sure that I have that baseline nutrition covered. So I, I, yeah, meals and nutrition, number one for me. Sleep, I'd say, is number two. Um, getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night, it's hard for me to do. I have a two-year-old and uh, he doesn't always sleep through the night. He also has type one diabetes. So, you know, multiple nights I'm up dealing with blood sugar issues. Um, and if I'm feeling stressed and my mental health is out of whack, like I have to take the steps that I need, whether that's asking for help, asking my husband for help, asking a family member for help, asking Danielle and my team for help so that I can try to, to get that eight hours of sleep. Just like waking up the next day rested makes a world of difference. Um, and then I'd say getting time in nature, like walking outside, putting my feet on the ground, you know, grounding, reconnecting with the energy wavelengths of the planet, um, you know, walking next to the beach, if possible, getting those negative ions. It just, it automatically reduces my stress levels and improves my mood without having to do anything. This has been awesome, guys. Thank you so much for talking about your journey and you know, more importantly than your business success, which has been obviously incredibly impressive with Sakara. I've just been blown away by the relationship um, and mutual respect that you guys have for each other. So thank you so much for sharing your story and your business's story. Thanks so much, Alex. Really Thanks for having it. us.
Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'd love to hear from you. Share in the comments your favorite part of this episode and also what guests you would love to see on Imposters Moving Forward. And finally, like and subscribe so you get content from this show every single week. I'll see you guys next time.